while there are some tools in your shop, table saw blades, joiner knives, planer knives, that you send out to have sharpened, there's plenty of tools in your shop that you should be able to sharpen. You really want to maintain these edges, keep them doing everything that they can do. For years, people have told me since I was a little woodworker, a dull tool is way more dangerous than a sharp tool. And it's true because with a sharp tool, you have better control and you're going to keep everything working much better. So let's start with bench chisels. We want to keep these cutting to a point where we can pair and grain with this chisel. How are we going to do that? Well, first off, let's talk about stone selection. I really like working on diamond stones because diamond are a woodworker's best friend, right? I like working on diamond stones because unlike other stones, we can't dish these out. And in a little bit, you're going to see me sharpen some carbide. And if you're going to sharpen carbide, you got to have diamond. So lots of benefits here. We need a little bit of lubricant on there. The lubricant is so the swarf that we're about to create doesn't clog up the stone. Swarf is just the funny name for the filings that come off of whatever it is we're sharpening. Now let's do this chisel a couple different ways. On this first approach, I want you to watch really, really close, making sure I got a puddle of liquid on here. Because here's what I want you to do. Look right there where the tip of the chisel is about to meet the stone. About to meet the stone when I roll it up. And a couple things are happening. Watch the puddle form right in front of that tip. There. It pushes the liquid out because right there the bevel is flat on the stone. The other thing I can feel is that bloop, the bevel is flat. What I do is Keep this finger here, see the puddle, feel it go flat, make a stroke. Now, when you're first getting started, what you may want to do is see the puddle, feel it go flat, make a stroke. Once you get going, you can go in both directions. Now, let's say you're doing that and you're a little unsure if you're maintaining the angle. Bench chisels are generally sharpened at either 25 degrees or 30 degrees, not air temperature, angle. Here's another alternative approach. Take a felt tip, color in the bevel. Let it dry for a sec. Now we're going to test our work. Touch, puddle, feel it go flat, stroke, Are we hitting the whole bevel? Is all of the felt tip coming off? So if I was only on the heel or only on the tip, we could see that. Here, I'm a little too far back. I'm not quite getting all of the tip. Getting there. Now here's a thing I'm doing too. And that is body mechanics. When I do sharpening of a bench chisel like this, I'm not moving just my arms. Because my feeling is your arms are good at going in circles. You've got this joint up here, and your arms like to go around. So I'm finding that angle, and then I'm actually moving my entire body forward and back. I'm really, I'm sort of moving at my ankles. And that keeps me going in a straighter line, I find, than just moving my arms. So again, puddle, angle, body forward, body back. So the distance from my hands to my chest is the same all the time. But I'm rocking back and forth in order to get that angle right. Then with our bench chisel, the other thing we need to do is lap the back. That's our last step. You paid for the whole stone, so use the whole stone. In other words, I'm kind of traversing back and forth across the face of the stone here, not just, it's kind of a tendency to just ride back and forth in the center.
The good news is once we have this information at our fingertips, pun sort of intended, we can apply it to other cutting tools. Now lapping the back, I'm just going to take that chisel and lay it flat on the stone. I got to come to the end of my plywood here so the handle doesn't hit. Lay that flat on the stone. And what that's going to do is knock any burr that we've created off the back of the cutting edge. And you want to have the back of the chisel nice and flat to really optimize the cutting capability of the chisel. We want the back of it to be dead flat. One of the things we can tell as we look at it is, is the stone contacting the entire back of the chisel. And here it is. Sometimes what happens is you can see honing marks on an edge and an edge, but not the middle. That would tell you that it's not flat yet. All right, bench chisel looks good. Now, take that information, apply it to other tools. From our plane, I started life with a plane iron. There it is, hiding under the paper towel. Same idea. It looks very much like a bench chisel on its cutting tip. So, fresh water on there. See the puddle, bigger puddle. See the puddle, feel the bevel go flat. Check your work. And then, once we've got that bevel done, what do we need to do next? Just like the chisel, lap the back. Plain iron. How about, let's go to the world of turning. How about your skew? Same idea, a little more water. And you can always, with the plain iron and the skew, you can take that felt tip and color them in too. Puddle, flat, stroke. Now part of the difference with our skew is we're beveled two faces. So flip, puddle, flat, stroke. But we're really doing pretty much the exact same thing that we did to the bench chisel and the plane iron. Now, in the world of lathe chisels, when we get into the gouge family, this is a roughing gouge. When we get into the gouge family, you don't want to go because we're going to leave little facets on there. We got to kind of windshield wiper this across the stone. With this, with your gouges, you're not going to see a puddle form, but we're going to feel that go flat. Now, if you find this cumbersome to do, we got a lot of chisel here. We're trying to hold that angle just right. This could be a case where it's easier to take the stone to the tool than the tool to the stone. What I mean is lock the chisel in under my arm, my left arm, right hand dominant, and I'm going to take a stone and roll it across that bevel in order to do my honing. Either one of those approaches will work. Find the one that works for you. It's really important with sharpening that you have products, sharpening products, and techniques that you're comfortable with so that you do the sharpening. Because if this comes off as being a pain in the butt to do, you're not going to do it, then you're going to end up with dull tools. Now while we're on this guy, let's look at router bits. And this is cool because router bits, of course, are carbide tipped for the most part. The only thing that's going to touch carbide is diamond. So we can hone our router bits. The key here is we're always on the flat part of the carbide, never on the profile, and count strokes. One, two, three, four. 
17, 18, 19, 20. Rotate, count strokes. Let's go. One. This is a great way to refresh the edge on your cutters. I do this a lot. If I'm going to use a dovetail bit on chippy material, Baltic birch plywood is a great example. I'll bring the router bit here to the diamond stone first, dress that edge to make sure I'm really optimizing its cutting capabilities, then put it in the, dove, in the router, dovetail jig, cut the plywood. With your router bits, if you have one that's got a ball bearing on it, this screw I've already got loose, you need to take the ball bearing off, and then once that's off, we can take the ball bearing off, because the ball bearing would be in the way of getting on the flat. One, two, three, four, five. Process is the same, just remember to take the ball bearing off. Now, in the world of carbide. Carbide lathe chisels have really come along. What do we know? We know that diamond will sharpen carbide. So think about this same way really we did the router bit, which is wet the stone. Don't try to sharpen the bevel. Just work on the flat. And this is a way that we can refresh that cutting edge so that we're back to great quality cuts. When we're done, a little bit of water, a wipe down, and our diamond stone is nice and clean. Now, depending on where you need to start, of course, diamond stones are available in a variety of grits. If we're taking a nick out of an edge, you're going to want to start at a coarser grit and then work your way up to the finer grit. So depending on if you're simply honing, you're refreshing the edge, you can go right to the finer grits. But if you got to do a more aggressive cut, start with that coarser grit. That takes care of some sharpening tips because we sharpened a lot of tips. See how that all comes together? And hopefully that'll help you keep your tools on the cutting edge in your shop. Mm -hmm.